Hello YouTube, Anthony here. Tonight I'm in my garage. It's a wonderfully cool night down here in South Florida uh, where it's uh, Saturday night at uh, 6.40 p.m. Uh, we're at 63 degrees and we're supposed to be going down to 48 degrees. Uh, winds are, it's a little bit windy. And so what I do tonight is I'm sitting in my garage and I'm going over some of my Bible notes that I've taken over the months and years uh, in my uh, Bible studies. And I decided to do a devotional that I wrote back in um, August of 2012 where I entitled it No Quarter um, regarding Jesus Christ as our source and our strength. And so it's in the book of Second John, which is all of 13 verses. And, and don't think that if a book of the Bible is short, it's easy to understand or it's uh, not worth uh, reading. All of Scripture is God-breathed, remember that, and all of, of Scripture has something to tell us. And so in this book of Second John, I would like you, of course, to get your Bibles, use your Bibles, read your Bibles. Um, we're not going to read the actual 13 verses, but we're going to go through... Uh, the 13 verses from my notes on the book of 2 John. And so let's get started. Again, I said it's called, the title to this devotional is called No Quarter. Uh, many times we gloss over or even skip very important pieces of scripture. Uh, here in 2 John, John the Elder, this is John the Apostle, is speaking to a lady. There are several different views on exactly who John is speaking to, and today we're not going to go in detail uh, to the um, theological study of those three different types of explanations of who exactly John is speaking to. I will say that whoever she is, she's a Christian and she knows the truth. First question, do you know the truth? John in verse 3 speaks of God's grace, mercy, and peace. What exactly does he mean? Well, tonight we're going to go over briefly what those three uh, titles mean, grace, mercy, and peace. Grace is undeserved favor to those who deserve the opposite. Mercy is pity shown to those who are guilty and wretched, not giving you what you deserve. Peace is the harmonious relationship that results from God's grace and mercy. That is peace. Peace is not necessarily the absence of war. Peace is not, uh, you know, you wake up one morning and um, no crimes have been committed in your community. That is not peace. Peace is something that you get when you're in right relationship with God through our Lord Jesus Christ who dispenses this grace and mercy resulting in peace. God the Father is the source and the Son, Jesus Christ, is the channel of that peace. John says this grace, mercy, and peace will be with us in truth and love. In verse 4, he talks about joy because many are walking in the truth. John is joyful to know that many are following the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, no new commands are needed, just adhering to what they have heard from the beginning. The basic command of love is given. We can love when we are walking in obedience to God's commands. Now we're getting near uh, up into verse 7 through 11, where we're going to concentrate tonight's study. The Apostle John has some very important information to tell us in these passages in these verses of scripture number one he says there are many deceivers that have gone out into the world who are they well those who denied Jesus Christ coming in the flesh or denied Jesus Christ's deity and there are many my friends out there in fact some may be watching this video tonight John says anyone who denies Jesus Christ is himself a deceiver and an antichrist. This is very serious language he is stating here. 
He says, anyone who denies Jesus Christ is himself a deceiver and an antichrist. Verse 8, John goes on to say, he, he issues a warning. He says, watch out, make sure you are a follower of Christ and not an imposter. For all followers of Christ will be rewarded fully and not shortchanged. So he's asking you or advising you to look and see if you are truly are a follower of Jesus Christ. Have you truly given your heart and life to Jesus Christ? Have you repented of your sin? Are you sorry for your sin? Have you repented means turn around a 180 degree turn and go the opposite direction with of course the help of the Holy Spirit who is a deposit guaranteeing you to the end. In verse 9 John says, those who have run ahead have abandoned the central teachings of Christ and add or take away from his message. They do not have God. Whoever continues in or remains steadfast, does not waver or stands firm, has both the Father and the Son. So there are many who go out today, and you see them in the world. Uh, they are those that teach another gospel that teach that Jesus was just a good man and he was not God uh, in the flesh. In verse 10, John issues a stern warning. All those who try to change the gospel are to be avoided at all costs. Verse 11, by welcoming them in their message means that you yourself may be one of them. So tonight's... Uh, message or the message from second john is uh, to avoid those who change the gospel or to uh, avoid being tainted by them that is not in essence we don't preach to them or do we don't try to uh, teach them the truth but these are people that have made it their business to be antagonists of christ and antagonists of the bible and john tells you do not associate with them or have them in your house in conclusion, in this short letter, we see Christians have a common bond in Christ. We have all received God's grace, mercy, and peace by repenting of our sins and turning to Christ for forgiveness. We know the truth. We must follow his commands to love, and we must, we must know how to recognize deceivers and avoid their erroneous teachings and so my friends today there are many uh, emerging churches there are many church leaders there are many cults and sects out there uh, changing the gospel watering down the gospel which of course is no gospel at all take for instance uh, a rising um, merging or melding of Christianity and Islam something called Chrislam um, that is to be avoided at all costs. That is not Christian. That is not, that's making appeasement. That's watering down God's word. That is nothing at all. That is a false religion. As good as it may sound, or as nice as they may make it sound, as harmonious as they may make it sound, uh, that we're all inclusive and everyone's good, and can't we just hold hands and everyone's gonna to go to heaven in the end these are my friends the deceivers that John is talking about in second John and so in closing tonight and the reason for this illustration and this study is to alert you of the urgency number one for you to make sure you are a Christian number two to strengthen you if you are already a Christian to help you expose and fight back against these dangerous heresies that are going on in the United States and the world and also to lift uh, one another up in truth and in love and so that is the purpose of tonight's study uh, go back and read second John study it and pray that uh, you will be used mightily by the Lord as I will pray uh, for you to be used mightily by him so let me pray in closing. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight. 
thanksgiving and praise on this wonderful, cool, breezy night, Father, where those that know you in truth and in love and ex has, have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior have your peace even in a world that is going astray, Father. We have that peace knowing that we have your grace and mercy and knowing that we have your Holy Spirit in us to lead us and guide us and see us through to the end. And Father, uh, give us and give each and every one of the people watching this video that know you already, give them the strength to stand, to speak out in truth and love, and to stand for your word, to stand for who you are. And Father, for those that don't know you, I pray that they will uh, read your word, mull it over, Father, give it thought, understand that the position they are in right now is a grave position, and that they are, in essence, walking on a tightrope with the pit of hell underneath them without Jesus Christ as their Savior. And Father, I just ask you to quicken their hearts and have them come to Jesus, to a relationship with Jesus Christ. Father, for all the world so-called world religions out there I pray that uh, their members will somehow wake up to the truth that someone will speak to them that you will send someone to speak to them father whether it's a missionary another a friend another church member somebody that knows the Lord Jesus father that you would have them enlighten them to your word and direct them to your truth Father, once again, thank you for this study. I thank you for the power that is found in Jesus Christ and knowing him as Savior. And it's in his name I pray. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for joining me. Thank you for um, being part of these studies. Please let us know uh, how we can pray for you uh, if you have accepted Jesus as your Savior. Let us know this. And uh, if you do need a Bible, maybe you don't have a Bible, let me know and I will send you a Bible uh, for free. This is Anthony. God bless and take care.